Good morning and welcome to the Funding Options for Startup and Growth Companies webinar. My name is Mirella Mellonma from Business Tampere and I will be the technical moderator of this webinar. In addition, we have Nora Varaniemi and Tom Miuitti from Business Tampere as chat moderators. You can ask questions through the chats and for possible follow-up questions, you can use the raise hand function and we will open your microphone. And opening words today will be presented by Tapio Siik from Business Tampere. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Tapio Siik and I work as a senior business advisor in Business Tampere. And very delighted to uh, uh, welcome you all to this uh, webinar. Uh, since mid-March, uh, Business Tampere has been running a series of um, uh, webinars around the crisis funding instruments available. Uh, for for uh, or basically any kind of companies, uh, but as uh, well, it seems like the situation uh, is now getting a little bit more uh, normal. We thought that it could be a, a nice idea to uh, return to a, a sort of regular programming and talk a little bit about the uh, funding options uh, for startups and growth companies, uh, which basically are always needed, whether there is crisis or not. So uh, when you want to grow your company, you need to go for the funding. And then uh, the instruments are, of course, still pretty much the same as they used to be. Uh, in addition to the, the crisis funding instruments, which have been now available uh, for, the, uh, for the last uh, three, four months. In this webinar, uh, we basically have three uh, major parts. So uh, first, uh, Tommy Payala will be talking about the general uh, concepts uh, of the funding and, and the different sources there. Then we'll uh, go through the business tamper support services uh, for for this uh, for the funding uh, services and options. And then in the end, we have a Q and A session uh, where you can ask questions uh, from from us, and uh, we'll try to answer them or look for the answers uh, at later stage. So we are targeting to close this uh, session in one hour. And uh, without further ado, I will now pass this to uh, Tommy to get going with the uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Tapio. So first up, we have Tommy Payala from Vimentum OU talking about funding options for startup and growth companies. What, where and when? Hey, good morning and uh, welcome to this webinar about funding options for startups and growth companies. Uh, my name is Tommy Payala. I've been involved in uh, startups and uh, growth companies for the past 20 years. First first 10 years uh, with my own companies, uh, established a few, uh, sold a few, bought a few, but uh, now for the uh, past eight years, I've been uh, helping other uh, startups and growth companies with funding and had the privilege to work with over, over 400 uh, startups and growth companies uh, related to funding. And uh, this is basically what I do. I piece together these funding puzzles for, for companies. And uh, that's the topic of today as well. So we're going to talk about the different sources of public and private funding, uh, but also about the criteria of these uh, different funding options and uh, what these uh, funding bodies, uh, bodies are uh, expecting from you. So you could uh, write better applications and, uh, and uh, see what these uh, funders think. And uh, then uh, the last thing is about uh, the timing and the funding path. So I'm going to give you an example of uh, how, how you could fund your company. And uh, as, as Tapio said, you can, uh, you can ask questions through the chat functionality and uh, we will add, answer those questions at the end of the session. So these things are going to be pretty generic and uh, there's a lot of generalization in these slides. So if you want to ask some specific questions related to your company, for example, you can do that via the chat function. Okay, let's get started. So um, first, I think it's uh, important to distinguish two types of businesses. There's this traditional, uh, let's say basic business, for example, retail or wholesale or traditional services with traditional business models. Oh, and, I'm, I'm very sorry to yeah. interrupt you, but can you please share your slides? What? <laughs> <laughs> Sharing is not on? No, it's not. Whoa. Good that you interrupted. Uh, let's see how it goes. I, I did press the share my screen option. Let's see. 
Let's try again. Now you are screen sharing, great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't miss much. <laughs> you missed a couple of ones. Well, yeah, let's continue. Uh, so this is the traditional uh, uh, companies. And uh, uh, then it, it's hard to uh, like di um, differentiate your company from other companies if you are uh, in a traditional basic business. Uh, and the other group is you know, like innovative growth companies. Uh, I don't like the word innovative, but uh, that's the one that uh, different funders use. Uh, it means that you have some sort of a unique self-developed product or service. So there's differentiation and you have at least the possibility to have a large international market and uh, you have a scalable business model. And then you have a lot more business uh, business options and funding options like from Business Finland and ELU and the European Union and, uh, and venture capital companies, for example. And uh, that's why we more focus on these today. But uh, don't need to worry if you're uh, working in a tr traditional market because traditional markets don't mean that you have a traditional business. So those are uh, some ex examples of my clients that have received significant funding, even though they do cakes or sell concert tickets or uh, build handmade guitars or take uh, school photos. So if you have some sort of a differentiation, uh, even in a traditional market, then you can be an innovative business and you can get uh, uh, investments and uh, different uh, uh, types of funding. And uh, when when I think about funding, it's always in uh, four categories. I'm not sure if this is an official categorization, but at least that's what I think. Uh, first of all, entrepreneurs, um, usually you always need to take risk. You don't have to have a lot of money, but you uh, at least need to take some sort of a risk. And uh, then the second group, uh, investments from angels, VCs or similar. And uh, third, soft money. Uh, and don't think that soft money is easy money, but it's uh, public funding like grants and loans from the government, European Union or local development agencies and uh, uh, public uh, funders like that. And the fourth one is loans from banks and similar. And uh, as a general rule of thumb, uh, if you have a, a innovative business and you're doing something that no one else does, you can pretty much count on having 50% soft money. And uh, then the rest will depend a lot about the business. Uh, it's, it's not always um, required that you have investors or you take loans. You can, of course, uh, fund it yourself. And uh, I hope someone notices what's missing from this picture. So don't forget the customers because the customers are your number one source of funding, at least in the long run, you have to have so, some sort of revenue and every negotiation with every public or private financer becomes so much easier if you have revenue and that's any revenue. Uh, it doesn't need to be about your main product or the main business model, uh, just to show that someone is willing to pay for your uh, product or service. That's always a bonus. Okay, and then about the uh, different funding sources. Uh, Finvera uh, is the uh, governmental body that guarantees loans for every, everyone and they have direct loans for some, for example, entrepreneurs themselves. And uh, Business Finland, ex -techers, they have grants and loans for rapid international growth. So you have to have some sort of international goal. And ELU, the Center for Economic Development, Transport and the Environment. So let's call it ELU. Uh, they have grants for developing products and services in some regions. Uh, for example, here in Tampere area, if you're a new company like less than three years, you can get grants for product uh, developing products. And in most regions, uh, you have grants for international growth. Uh, here in Tampere area, if your uh, company is a bit older, you can get grants for going international and uh, going to new markets. And they do have consulting services in all regions. So they have heavily subsidized uh, consulting uh, 
companies that they have uh, on their lists and you can use their services at a pretty low rate. And uh, the European Union, they have grants for uh, like big ideas with big impact and uh, they have guarantees for innovative companies. If you're uh, requiring less than 10 million euros, they can guarantee bank loans. But they can also uh, give direct loans for innovative companies if you're uh, looking for over 10 million euros, but then you do have to have a significant revenue as well. Uh, those are the basic ones. Uh, then you do have some other uh, uh, public funding options as well. Uh, there's some local and regional and development agencies that have uh, some budget budgets to f um, buy pilot projects, for example. Uh, funds and foundations are useful, at least uh, if you're operating in science or arts or environment. You can find them at Aurora, Tietokanta. And uh, there's some strategic government program funding, uh, less right now, but uh, hopefully more next year. And uh, there are market specific agencies. For example, if you're uh, doing something related to space, the European Space Agency funding is really f useful. And uh, if you're developing games or some creative uh, projects, for example, uh, you can um, apply for funding from Creative Europe or Copiosta. They have grants available as well. Uh, and to uh, let's talk about the uh, different instruments these these uh, funders have. So Elu Center, um, the only thing that they have is Yrityksen kehittämisavustus, and that's only available in Finnish and Swedish. So you still have to write those applications in Finnish or Swedish. Uh, but they do uh, talk about a lot of different instruments, but they all uh, under this headline of Yrityksen kehittämisavustus. And that's a 50% grant. And then Business Finland has a lot more. Uh, they have uh, the first step in the ladder is the innovation voucher. So it's a 4,000 euro uh, voucher. You have to pay 1,000 euro yourself. So the total is 5,000 euros. And you can buy services related to a new innovation uh, with international potential. And the next stage is usually a Tempo grant. Um, it would need to be used more into internet internationalization, so going to new markets, for example, and less for R&D. But you can, for example, develop your first demo product with that and then look for the first international markets. And then R&D loan, so a loan for product development. It used to be 70% of the product development cost, but uh, nowadays it's uh, just 50% of the cost. And it, it also always, always has to be more than 100,000 euros. And uh, now that the other COVID funding has ended, um, Business Finland has uh, a temporary TKI loan available until the end of this year. And uh, it's, it's basically just the same as the R&D loan, but you can get uh, up to 70% of product development costs. And you can also get that if you're uh, operating just in Finland, so you don't have to have an international angle in your business. And then if your uh, company is uh, less than five years old and you're growing rapidly, you can apply to uh, into the uh, Young Innovative Companies program. And that's for rapid international growth. So we can get uh, up to 1.25 million euros of grants and loans for uh, sales and marketing. And uh, a few less used ones are um, the second tempo. If you're uh, accepted into an international accelerator, accelerator program, you can apply for a second tempo funding. And uh, the go innovation funding if you do research projects with other companies or universities. And explorer funding, uh, you can buy services or hire a person or attend trade shows with that uh, grant. And uh, the other national. Um, soft money source Finvera, they have loans directly for entrepreneurs. So if you want to uh, invest into your own company, you can apply for a loan from Finvera, a, per a personal loan. And they also have guarantees for bank loans. So if you uh, want to get a loan from the bank, they can guarantee up to 80% of that loan. So you uh, have to guarantee just 20% <clears throat> of the loan yourself. Uh, they used to have direct loans for businesses as well, but it's rare that you nowadays could get a uh, 
loan directly from Finnevera, so it's usually uh, just guarantees for bank loans. And the European Union, uh, those grants are about to change. So there's, um, there's currently just this one uh, single company grant, the EIC Accelerator Program, and the last uh, Last call for that one is in uh, October this year. It's a grant for uh, half a million to 2.5 million euros for uh, big projects with big impacts. Uh, they are preparing the like the new Horizon 2020 program for next year. Uh, there's going to be new grant opportunities for single companies, and there's going to be different uh, categories. I think uh, they've been preparing it pretty uh, <laughs> for pretty a long time, and uh, they did announce something, but they withdraw them. So let's see what's it's, what it's going to be, but it's going to be for next year. And uh, the European Union also has grants for consortiums. If you have um, attendees from uh, at least four different countries, you can apply for a consortium grant for that. And they also guarantee bank loans. And what's important to notice, uh, is that uh, most of the public funding is for projects, not for companies. So uh, whether it's ELU or Business Finland or anything like that, you always need to uh, present the project. And every public financer have their strict criteria for like the scope of the project and the use of fund and the use of words and uh, the timing of the project. And they always keep changing. So that's where it becomes tricky. And a few words about private funding as well. Um, angels and VCs. Um, the difference usually is that angels are private persons who invest like from 10,000 euros to half a million, for example. And then VCs, um, small VCs can um, invest from a few hundred thousand euros to a million. And then like the uh, regular venture capital companies, they usually uh, invest a minimum of 1 million euros. So. Um, don't go looking for too much money from angels and don't go looking for too little money from VCs. And where to find them? I think that's the most common question. Um, basically, it's through networks, so uh, at least the angel. Um, events are always useful, so attend local events. Uh, Arctic 15 is a great event if you're looking for investors. And FIBAN has their own um, ev uh, events as well. And Schlosh, uh, is a good party, but it's uh, it's also difficult to find an actual investor from there. Um, and then Fibon and Iban, they are in angel investor networks. Uh, Fibon is the Finnish one and Iban is the European one. And they have uh, good online services as well. So you can present your company there and they have events as well. And LinkedIn is a good place to find investors as well. So if you're, uh, especially if you're looking for like, um, peer companies that you know that uh, operate in the similar business, for example, or are in the same stage. You can look, you know, look at their uh, investors through LinkedIn and also through Asia Castieto. So you can, uh, for free, you can see uh, who are the board members of uh, peer companies, for example. So usually if there's an angel investment, one of the angels will be in the board of the company. So that's how you can, you can tell who's investing who, into who. And uh, looking at the, uh, Venture capital side of things, uh, FVCA is the Finnish Venture Capital Associ Association, and uh, Invest Europe is the uh, European equivalent of them. So it lists all the uh, all the venture capital companies, so you can find them through there. But I think uh, even better is Crunchbase because they track investments and investors, so uh, you can you can look at different companies and he see who's invested into them and how much and when. So then you can build up your own list of um, VCs that could be uh, for your company. And uh, crowdfunding is an option, but that would be a topic for another <laughs> slide. So uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Investor, um, those are the uh, most common platforms. So there are a lot of them. And of course, banks, it's private funding, but it's, uh, it's kind of on the wrong side of the balance sheet, but you can get loans and uh, credit limits with Finnevera guarantee from banks. And uh, who's expecting what? So that's that's important to know when you're applying funding, 
whether it's from a private source or a public source. And everyone is uh, looking for a, a product or service with some unique selling point, uh, USB, scalable business model, international market, and a team that can execute the growth plan. Uh, banks are easy. Uh, they just uh, want their money back with interest. So they are looking for um, uh, companies and uh, products that have uh, small risks. So they want to have their money back. Uh, Elu Center, they are uh, looking for a new job opportunities in the local area. So you have to employ, employ in your local area. Business Finland is just looking for export revenue. Uh, so preferably over 10 million euros in five, five years. So you have to uh, aim high when you're uh, talking with Business Finland. Uh, crowdfunding. It's usually being part of the journey, some return. For example, uh, breweries have been successful in crowdfunding because you you just want to be part of the journey. And uh, angel investors and VCs, they always want to have their money back with a uh, with a significant uh, uh, payback. And uh, just a note: use investor money for sales and marketing because you can uh, usually always get. Uh, public funding for product development. So use the investor money for sales and marketing. A couple of tips for uh, pitching or applying. Um, focus on why, not what. So uh, why should someone care what you're doing? And uh, why would someone pay for your product or service? And why someone would buy from you and not from someone else? Uh, why you are the one who will succeed and why you need the money now. So what are you going to do about the money with the money? And uh, provide scenarios for financials. Um, that's usually a good tactic because uh, if you don't do that, then the investor or the, uh, the funder uh, doesn't have a clue if the uh, one number you provide, if it's optimistic or if, it, if it's pessimistic. And uh, they usually divide the numbers by at least 10, what you're telling them. So if, if you provide, for example, three scenarios, if all the risks materialize, then you will get like 2 million euros of revenue. If you're doing okay, 10 million, or if you do what you know you can do, you can get 50 million euros of revenue, just as an example. Um, and be honest. Uh, you're going to get caught if you're uh, uh, talking something that you can't uh, can't really do. So be honest in uh, what you're lacking. For example, if you uh, if you need some some more knowledge in your team, be honest about it. Um, and what's a fundable startup? And this applies for both public financiers and uh, and private as well, because public financiers are investors. They look for the same things as, as other investors. Uh, there needs to be a market need. So whatever you do, you're solving a real problem. And market size, preferably over 1 billion euros, uh, that's, that's kind of something that you can always prove that you have a market of over 1 billion euros. But that's kind of a strict criteria for Business Finland, for example. Uh, Again, differentiation, you have to have an innovative solution that has a unique selling point and you have to have some sort of unfair competitive advantage. Uh, scalable business model means that it makes money while you sleep. Um, and it aims high. Tens or hundreds of millions of export revenue if all goes well. And a great core team. So it's important to note that one person is not a team. So uh, you can't get funded if you're just a one person or it's really, really difficult. And you can't get anything from a uh, business building, for example, if you're, you, if you're a one, one person team. And uh, as a note, a startup for business Finland is less than five years old and uh, for Finvera and Elu, it's, it's less than three years old. And lastly, um, take a look at a typical funding path for a startup in Finland regarding um, or, or um, one that would utilize all the public funding that's available. And usually it starts with the uh, Business Finland Innovation Voucher. That's the 4,000 euro grant for buying services. And then 
you get some sort of an angel investment or invest yourself in the company or minimum of 30,000 euros because then you can apply for a business Finland tempo grant. There's a requirement of uh, at least 30,000 euro investment to get into the business Finland tempo program. And then after tempo, uh, usually you get a bigger angel investment or a small fund investment, for example, 150,000 euros, and then you can apply for a business Finland R&D loan of uh, 150,000 euros, so they can match that. Then uh, when you have your product ready, uh, you can, for example, um, apply for a second tempo if you get accepted into an international accelerator, go to New York, for example, to conquer the US, and uh, then get a bigger investment, get another business Finland R&D loan, so you can get as many business Finland R&D loans as you need, and if you can prove that your uh, product is uh, and your business is going forward, you can always get more fun mon funding from business Finland if you meet your goals. And uh, usually there's another round of investments here, but uh, you can also jump directly into the Business Finland Young Innovative Companies program. So that's the 1.25 million euros for uh, uh, for sales and marketing uh, abroad. And uh, that's a combination of uh, grants and loans. So it's up to up to 500,000 euros of grants and then 750,000 euros of loans. And at the same time, you can always apply for another R&D loan from Business Finland. So even though you would have the Business Finland Young in Innovative Companies program, uh, you can at the same time have a, a Business Finland R&D loan or a co-innovation project, for example, with uh, some university. And um, throughout this path, you can get bank loans with Finnevera guarantee and bank loans with uh, European Union guarantee. Uh, so that's the uh, like the typical funding path, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's all I have as a uh, like a general um, presentation about the funding. And uh, as I said, you can ask questions to the uh, chat functionality, or uh, ask questions uh, after this, this meeting. And that's that's the next thing that we're going to talk about the uh, business Tampere services for for um, companies. And uh, there's two, two types of uh, funding advisory services that Business Tampere provides. And uh, I'm a service provider in the first one. If you can uh, select the second slide, yes. Uh, so I provide services uh, through this funding help desk. So if you have some questions about funding, general questions, uh, for example, what your company should do next or uh, what uh, what some uh, funding money, for example, what Business Finland offers right now, or if you run into a problem with some, some funding application question, for example, you can always ask through these channels. And uh, this is kind of a short term uh, help desk type of thing so it's not consulting it's just uh, asking questions and some something if if i can do something to help you with something uh regarded uh regarding funding and then tapio has uh, another service that he will talk more about yes thank you very much tommy for this this information um next up we have uh tapio Sik from business Tampere talking about the uh, funding clinics that we provide. Okay, thanks Tommy for the good presentation there. So um, uh, as Tommy said, we have these two uh, uh, services in, in Business Tamper and uh, to actually quite large extent, uh, uh, we are also overlapping. So uh, we have very similar background with Tommy and, and uh, uh, we'll be probably discussing uh, quite a lot uh, on, on the same issues and topics but the main I would say difference between the help desk and the the, the, the clinic service I'm, I'm running is that uh, I'm a little bit more uh, sort of a let's say educational side so I try to make sure that uh, uh, whoever uh, comes to me 
gets the basic understanding of the, the playing field and then the, sort of the rules of the game. And the whole thing starts with a uh, 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 funding clinic. Uh, you can book um, one to two hour uh, call slots to me. Uh, you will see the link there in the next slide. But uh, so that's the starting point. So uh, all in all, uh, basically, just we go through the uh, your company situation. And then uh, I try to get a, a sort of a good view that, OK, what would be probably the next uh, steps that that would make sense for you to take? And um, when we plan this service, uh, we sort of designed four different kind of modules uh, uh, on different support, different stages of the funding path. And uh, the funding planning, um, this time uh, sort of a, a recommendations there are just sort of advisory. It really doesn't necessarily take a half a day, but uh, the uh, funding planning uh, is something where we go, we can go through the basic sort of a, a funding uh, needs for your type of company, and then uh, also uh, what what do you need to know about the the funding round parameters like the valuations and and, and liquidation perhaps and then uh, the terminology more or less. Uh, then uh, one module is focusing on on the documents you will need uh, when you start to talk with the investors. Uh, so there are like these elevator pitches, uh, one two pagers, data sheets, uh, actual uh, uh, investment pitches and so forth. So uh, I can provide certain examples there, but uh, you of course need to do all the work. So I'm not gonna write the, the uh, pitch or any of the materials. I'm happy to review them and give comments, but uh, but all, all work comes to your side in that sense. Uh, then uh, when you are really actually going uh, to uh, run a funding round, uh, I'm basically there to sort of uh, give my help to maybe make some con contacts, also to discuss with you that what would be the best kind of investor for your 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 case, and uh, what are the the different kind of uh, channels which Tommy also already covered to some extent in the presentation there to sort of uh, gain access to the investors and then uh, whether they are angels or VCs, and then uh, there is a fourth module which is a. Uh, uh, uh focusing on on the pitching or the presentation training which we basically do with with uh, partners so uh we are currently partnering uh, with the seed forum so there will be actually a pitch training arranged now this fall again it's a uh, one full day training which basically get, gets you um, going uh, uh with a very good pitch so in the next slide um uh, there is a uh uh, a short description of the, the like the first contact and there you can see the uh, uh, website link where you can go and you can basically see my the free slots in my calendar and make a booking and then well in the last uh, three four months the meetings have been mainly on uh, on teams but uh, there is no reason to have the meeting face to face either and once once the situation gets a little bit uh, more normal and as said, uh, the point really here is to sort of uh, understand on both sides that uh, uh, what is the situation and what kind of uh, sort of next steps uh, uh, would be good to have. Uh, uh, in the next slide, uh, there is a, a more sort of a, a, a let's say detailed description of the, what the funding planning uh, uh, comprises. The, the way this has been actually going uh, now in the uh, uh, when we've been running this is that uh, I have done very few of this kind of a, like a fixed modules on, on the planning and then the documentation and funding round because uh, I'm happy to sort of uh, uh, I've, I've been happy to find out that uh, most companies I would say in the Tampa region who contact me have already a uh, pretty good understanding of the basics and, and and so it is more of a mixture of all these uh, three or four modules that that, that we can go through then uh, at later stage so um, uh, uh, the way we've been running this is again uh, currently with teams but uh, 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 going forward uh, again we can have uh, more face-to-face -face meetings as well so in the next uh, uh, slide uh, there is a um, uh, again, short description of, of the documents. Uh, the elevator pitch is basically this uh, 30 seconds to two minutes pitch where you, you, you 
uh, in a nutshell, describe why investors should invest, invest in you. The one page or the data sheet is, uh, is uh, as, as the name implies, very con condensed uh, uh, brochure of, of your funding need, what you are doing, what do you need the money for, and, and so forth. And then the investor presentations are uh, a separate task. Uh, of course, there are um, uh, one thing to understand also, I think, regarding the presentations that uh, there is not just one pitch. There are actually, you have to fine tune the, the, uh, the uh, presentation depending on where you are presenting it and, or to whom you are presenting it. So in the pitching event, the, the presentation is most likely uh, uh, different from the one that if you are going to one-on-one -on -one investor meeting. Then, of course, there are a lot of uh, other uh, data room uh, related documents, uh, the company documentation agreements and contracts and so forth, which you need to uh, prepare for the funding round. Uh, so uh, when, when the due diligence is taking place, you have everything ready available there. And then, uh, then in the next slide, the actual funding round, uh, as said, uh, as Business Tampere is a public uh, sort of a service provider, uh, we definitely have, can't take any role in the actual funding discussions. So uh, uh, what we can do is to help you find the relevant connections and the, 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 uh, the potential investors. But then after that, uh, you, you are solely responsible for, for the actual negotiations and discussions and then uh, decisions, uh, whether you take the funding from somewhere or not. Uh, but of course, uh, how we are happy and I'm happy to sort of uh, have discussions if you have uh, sort of uh, questions, what, what does something mean and, and what kind of impact uh, potentially some, some uh, let's say, terms in, in the uh, funding term sheet uh, may, may cause for you. And then uh, the last slide actually there is uh, just briefly about the uh, presentation training. As I mentioned, uh, we are all the time sort of uh, looking into this area and then depending on the need, uh, we organize these. And then uh, we also work together with the, uh, the uh, uh, accelerator programs we have running in the region. So we try to uh, combine and uh, sort of their needs with ours and then have these trainings so that they will fit into the uh, accelerated program timetables as well. And as said, there will be one this fall uh, coming up and then there will be more information about that coming up uh, later. So uh, I would say all in all, uh, that that's uh, pretty much what, what we do in, in Business Tamper. And as said, uh, Tommy and myself uh, can pretty much probably answer uh, the same uh, questions uh, quite well. Uh, Tommy, is more uh, may, uh, sort of helping maybe with the actual real issues that you may have when, when you are, let's say, filling in the, the Business Finland uh, application form or what, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, he's been doing that much more. Uh, I can probably help you there as well, but that kind of things I would more direct to Tommy. And then if you wanna have more about more generic discussion, uh, a little bit along the lines that Tommy's presentation was there that, okay, who's where, who's doing what, why are they doing this and that, uh, then uh, it's, it's probably coming more, to more towards my direction uh, in this service uh, offering what we have here. But uh, I think uh, we are doing quite good in time um, and we can move towards the questions uh, from the participants. So uh, Nora and Tommy, uh, what do we have uh, there in the chat uh, for us? Okay, good morning, everybody. So thanks, Tapio and Tommy, uh, for your introductions. We are here happy to uh, enable some discussion with you. We have sent us a few questions uh, through the chats. And first, we are going to give them to Tapio and Tommy separately. Now, this is also a perfect timing for you to send uh, a bit more of questions. And uh, if you also want to uh, have your question asked directly, so you can also use the raise hand function and then we try to enable you as well to to make the question if if you do have the time but hey let's start uh, it rolling now so we, we got one question coming uh right in the beginning of the uh presentation so this is a quick answer maybe for top you and tommy you both so what means bc 
Well, <clears throat> my name is from, was mentioned worse first, so maybe I'll, I'll give the answer. Uh, Tommy, you can go on there. VC, of course, is an abbreviation of the venture capitalist, which uh, uh, in this like funding environment, it really means that uh, there is a fund uh, where uh, the uh, investors, usually multiple investors, have uh, put money in to be invested according to their uh, wishes and strategies. So they, the, the investors say that, okay, we want to put in, in this fund 10, 15 million, and uh, the fund should be focusing on this or that market segment and this stage of the companies. And then there is a separate management company running the uh, fund, uh, which is the actual operational body. So uh, they are the people you will be talking with. So uh, there, there is a company who is investing other people's money. And that's the major difference between the angel and the venture capital fund. So the angels uh, invest their own money and normally they make decisions by themselves. In a venture capital fund, uh, there is a company who is investing other people's money. And, and that also means that they are uh, more rigid and strict maybe with what they can do and what they want to do because they can go against the, the will of the, of the investors uh, in the fund. So maybe that's like in a nutshell how I see it. Tommy, anything to add? Well, I think that's, that was a really good one. And uh, it, it's also differentiated by the uh, amounts that are invested. So uh, okay. angels usually uh, usually invest like a few 10,000 euros or up to half a million. And usually VCs are uh, from 1 million up. Yeah, I think that that's a good uh, clarification as well. Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks for the clarifications. I hope we gave a sufficient answer. So then uh, a simple question as well, how to qualify uh, the, for the services uh, Business Timber is providing. So this is rather simple maybe uh, to answer. So does Business Timber support if the person is staying in ESPO and the company registration is in ESPO? So how do we handle with that kind of person now? Maybe it's, it's top here, you can, you can give an answer. Uh, that is a good question. And well, uh, we definitely, I've, I've been talking with uh, uh, entrepreneurs and companies who are not uh, based in, in Tamper, at least for the time being. Uh, so in most cases, uh, uh, the reason why, why they've been contact me is that they have certain interest or connection to Tampere and then would like to understand that, okay, uh, what would it take uh, for them to maybe move some of the activities or to Tampere or have some presence here? Uh, I think, uh, I'm, to be honest, I'm not actually uh, uh, sure if we can sort of uh, uh, limit <laughs> this service to be just in Tamper. So uh, uh, in, I, I, would, I would put it this way, that I definitely talk with everyone, uh, depending then uh, what the situation is, uh, it may vary a little bit how far we can take it. Okay, great. Then uh, about EU funding, this is probably for Tommy more. So when to apply EU funding, uh, could you apply it as a single company or do you need to have a group of companies? And then also who is helping with applications? Is there any public advisor helping with seeking EU funding? Good questions. Uh, I need to be careful here because I'm one of the persons who evaluates those <laughs> applications. But uh, um, I think the main criteria is that you have to have some sort of an EU wide or global impact in what you're doing. So uh, if you're doing something like B2B software that's uh, useful for someone, then apply from business Finland. But if you're doing something, for example, uh, in the medical field, you're curing cancer or something that everyone knows that has a big impact, then I think it's a good idea to uh, apply for EU funding. And the stage of the company, um, uh, currently, there's just one uh, one funding instrument for single companies. It's the EIC Accelerator Program. So you have to have some sort of revenue and you have to uh, have proven your business model. So it's it's for accelerating your business. And, uh, and regarding who's helping, um, Business Finland has at least two persons who help companies uh, with their uh, with their applications. So they, they answer questions and they can also, at least for a limited number of companies, they can provide like uh, help reviewing those applications so they can read and comment those applications. But uh, that's basically case by case. And uh, 
then uh, regarding the um, funding for groups of companies, there are different topics and different calls that uh, the European Union has on their website. So they have some sort of a deadline and they're looking for solutions or uh, proposals for different types of uh, problems, for example. So you uh, have to provide a, uh, a project that would help, for example, um, what would be the, uh, the current ones? Uh, there's something to do with uh, like environmental pro projects, for example. And then you have to put in your um, application with, uh, with four companies from four different countries. And uh, those are big consortium applications. So they, you, you, uh, I don't, I don't uh, like propose that you would be the, uh, uh, the main applicant there. So it's usually, uh, good if there's some German large company, for example, doing the main application and you're the participant there. It's a lot of work and a lot of, uh, uh bureaucracy there. And, uh, as said, the, uh, uh, the, uh, funding is going to change for next year. And there's no official uh, news yet on uh, what types of instruments there will be, but uh, I think there will be a smaller grant for good ideas. So you can present ideas and you can get like 50,000 euros for uh, taking the idea further. And then there will be similar uh, larger um, funding for single companies, like from half million to 2.5 2, 2 million for uh, uh, like developing the idea further but uh there's no official news yet yeah well yeah. maybe i'll just add uh, i don't have to be careful because i got out of the evaluation uh, in Good. march so <laughs> yeah i was there for uh, three four years as well uh but um uh yeah it, i think it's exactly as you, as you said but um there is also uh, there are also some other eu level sort of uh, uh let's say activities or instruments uh, which uh you you could look into one is eit uh, European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Uh, they are actually an umbrella sort of organization, which is uh, which has uh, what they call KICS, Knowledge Innovation Centers, and they they are focusing on different kind of technology sectors. So um, there is one for um, uh, climate, one for inner energy, one for uh, digital platforms, uh, and now the newest one actually that just started here in Finland is EIT Food. And uh, these, uh, these activities, all, uh, all of them are basically running their own accelerator programs or, or funding programs. And um, uh, if you get in there, uh, you gain access to some, uh, of course, the networks uh, that are European level, but then you can also sometimes get there, uh, let's say something uh, between uh, uh, 50 to maybe even 100K euros of, of, of grants. So that that may be also one one thing to look into, but it is an issue, as I said, uh, regarding the help of getting these uh, sort of applications done. Uh, it, it, it's uh, they, they are not always necessarily easy. It's a little bit like with Business Finland that you need to sort of understand the the language, uh, what what you can say and what you can't say. Yeah, wow, you are providing us, us a lot of information. Very good. A uh, few comments now uh, for the persons who have asked the questions. So, so we have actually received now quite a plenty of the questions. So if you want to have more information and uh, to get more detailed answer uh, for you, so you should contact, first of all, Tommy Payala, the help desk service for quick questions. And then for more detailed cases, you should contact Tapio. So, so this is brief information here. Also, if you wanted to elaborate a, a little bit more on these questions, we will organize new webinars also in the autumn time. So stay tuned in, in those. There will be more, more topics covered in, in funding. But hey, let's shoot a few quick questions here in between. So maybe quite short answers would be applicable uh, for these ones. So this one uh, comes to Tapio. So uh, the person is planning for next funding round. There is a need for documentation. So how much will be charged? Maybe from you, and then if there are any other persons who, who would like to be able to help in, in documentation for funding round. Well, I don't charge anything. That's uh, the, the quick, uh, easy answer. So what I do is, is uh, basically for free. 
Uh, but I don't, as I said, I, I will not produce the documentation for you. I can give you some examples and then uh, sort of uh, point you to different sources. In uh, The internet is full of, uh, I would say, good sources uh, to see what, what kind of documents and documentation is needed for the funding round. And uh, uh, most of it, uh, I would say, uh, you can produce yourself. And uh, it, it, and the ones that that sort of may cost you money are are the ones that where you will maybe need the help of a lawyer, but I think you will need that lawyer help anyways for those documents uh, uh, because they are comp company uh, documentation like shareholder agreements and stuff like that, which I, I always advise that uh, you shouldn't really write them yourself. Uh, at least get them checked by the lawyer. So uh, I would say uh, there are of course there are private service providers and consultants who can uh, sort of uh, uh, help you create these documents and uh, the, the document sets and they will charge uh, of course their uh, their sort of a consultancy fee for that but uh, uh, so it's your decision uh, how much of those services you want to use and how much you can you want to sort of uh, spend your own time looking uh, for the templates and then developing them further and then, then the next one comes from here. Let's take it to Tommy. Uh, sorry, to Tommy, maybe. So, uh, how do we uh, think of this? That is it really needed to demonstrate revenue first, regardless of funding instruments? So it goes to Tommy. Uh, no, you don't have to have revenue, and uh, it depends a lot on your business. For example, uh, medical uh, medical companies as clients who haven't shown revenue for the first six years, but that's typical in a, if you're developing some sort of a medical service, for example. And uh, even if you're um, a software company, for example, you can, um, of course, apply for uh, the um, innovation voucher and uh, tempo funding and the first angel, angel round funding uh, without any revenue. And uh, that's kind of typical, but um, for example, if you're um, doing something for the consumers or uh, operate in a more traditional business, then it's, uh, of course, it's good if you have some revenue, at least in the long run. Uh, the first uh, funding you can get without revenue, but you would pretty quickly need some sort of proof that someone is willing to pay for your service. And also maybe one thing to add is that the revenues always have impact on the valuation you can raise the funding. Yeah. So uh, I think that that's probably the main point there that uh, uh, you can get funding, I would say, without revenues, but the, your valuation expectations need to be realistic in that case. Yeah, because there's a lot more risk. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, we have still time for a few questions. So now our time is going to be, be up. So Thank you. We, we cannot accept any more questions now. So a couple of quick ones still coming. This one comes to Tommy as well. So do all funding bodies expect the company to own uh, our own technology or, uh, or is it possible to leverage on other companies' technology? Um, in principle, you should own your, uh, own your technology because otherwise you're dependent on what the other company is doing. Uh, especially for public funding, it's it's really important that you own all the IPR rights to what you're developing. Uh, for example, Business Finland, they, they require that you own the IPR. Of course, you can uh, somewhat, somewhat build on top of some other technology, but you need to be careful that you're not totally dependent on any other company. Thank you for that. Uh, then another one, this is a bit more detailed, but I think this is super interesting. So let, let's have it still here. So Business Finland, uh, Tommy, you mentioned that there is TKI loan for 70%. Uh, so how would you explain it a bit more in detail? How is it now related to COVID-19 situation? What can be covered uh, through that? Um, yeah, that's a pretty new one. Um... Uh, it was launched a couple of weeks ago. Uh, have we got uh, the first decisions on that already? And uh, um, it's basically the same as the R&D loans are. So you can develop some new product or service. And uh, what's different is that, as said, it's seventy percent of the cost, and you should link it somehow to the COVID situation. So it's either that. Uh, for example, you have um, 
employees that don't have anything other to do so they would have free time to do some product development that's a good explanation but i think better one is that you have some sort of a new opportunity because of covid um, so you have uh, for example providing a service that's uh, new now when the uh, world has changed because of covid uh, so you, you have to some sort of build some sort of a link to covid uh, when you are applying for that, but it doesn't need to be uh, directly something that would solve the situation. So it can be something that's uh, a new opportunity uh, uh, provided by COVID situation. Okay, and, and then we are entering for the last questions. We are, we are sorry that we couldn't just take all of your questions, but as said, uh, please approach Tommy and Tapio individually uh, with your specific questions and stay tuned for the next webinars to come uh, during the autumn period so this is the last one now we are having for today uh, so let's get it rolling so there's a question uh, from a person who has hospitality services and who would like to expand further to tourism so which type of funding there would be especially available for tourism as, as we all know that this has been an exceptional times for for tourism as well <laughs> long quiet moment um yeah mm. it's, not, it's, not an easy one here for the last no. for the last one but yeah told me you can try to answer it up here as well it's tricky uh the tkl tki loan if you're pro uh, developing some sort of new service that you would provide uh and uh, that's that's possible um but then there are um I think there would be some elucenter funding if if the company is situated uh in a rural area so if it's not in the city center, you could uh, develop some sort of services if the address of the uh, company is uh, not in directly in the city center, for example. But uh, it's pretty hard to get, at least to my knowledge, to get any grants because uh, it's, it's always about the competition. So if the government would uh, fund one, one company, they would have to fund all similar companies. So you have to have some sort of a differentiation about that. But uh, that's that's pretty tricky to answer. Do you have anything else? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, the public side definitely is exactly as you said that uh, uh, it's, it's very, very tough. On the, of course, if, if you have really some new disruptive idea how to sort of make the tourism and the hospitality services, let's say more safe now after uh, COVID, or, or something sort of a very uh, innovative and scalable, then uh, of course there are always angels and VC funds also investing uh, in, in that sector. So that may be something to look into, but uh, if it's um, sort of a, just expanding the regular uh, current way of doing and doing it maybe with some help of an app, uh, that, that may not be interesting enough for the private side either. So it is a very tough question uh, to find uh, funding for that. Thank you, and the time is up for the questions. So, so thank you from our side, and, and now we're proceeding uh, with W for the final words. Thank you. Okay, yeah, well, uh, Thanks for all the participants for the active uh, uh, sort of participation and the, and the questions. So uh, it, it's always good to sort of uh, see that there is interest and, and, and we had actually pretty good crowd also attending the, the webinar, although we are in the middle of the holiday season, more or less here in Finland. So uh, summer is quiet, but it's also a good time to sort of a, a sort of a sit back and do your own planning and preparations uh, for the fall, uh, uh, when you think about the funding, and, and so if, when, the, when the sort of everyone returns back to office, you are ready to uh, move forward very swiftly and, and <clears throat> start the discussions uh, without any 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 delay there. So um, just to mention one more time, uh, all the materials will be available. This uh, webinar will be also uh, uh, in uh, Business Tampere YouTube channel uh, afterwards, so you can go there and uh, take a look at it again. And as Tommy mentioned over there, uh, please uh, get in touch with uh, myself or Tommy uh, with any uh, questions you want, may want to ask uh, and, or get into more details. So I just wanted to wish uh, from, on behalf of all the Business Tampere team, uh, wish everyone a very relaxing summer and, and let's be safe out there. Thank you. <laughs>